believe that and I hope all of you believe so. Do I sound like a philosopher? <laughs> so when I was in class 12, till then, there is no electricity in our village. I used to study in the light of lanterns. And few kilometers away, there was a town where there was electricity, there was television. And I still remember that we used to walk there to watch the India-Pakistan match. Who want to miss that, right? And when way back, I always wonder, like, you know, how good it will be have the electricity in our house. And this not for watching the match, but for the study time. From then onwards, I was thinking, how to make electricity cost effective or low cost? How to make water accessible to everyone? How to make medicine accessible to everyone? And my father, who always inspired me, used to say that if you want to think something big, you have to take a risk. And that's what the journey started. So it's almost 10 years back, a middle class Bengali boy with an executive class dream flew almost 12,000 kilometers from the Bengal to Boston to reach to the place of El Dorado. It took almost 12 hours to reach there, but it took 24 years of hard work and perseverance to realize the dream. And I reached to the United States, and since TEDx demands to introspect about one's oneself, and probably this is the first time I'll be talking about myself and my career, and if you have to look back, who are the person who has been contributed towards my life and my career, so then I should ask this question, who am I? So basically, so these are the persons like you know, who are the turning points of my life. My wife, she's a medical doctor sitting here in the audience. My parents, who are not here today, but who always inspire me. And this man, who is my PhD advisor back in Boston those days, and who turned me an inquisitive <coughs> student to someone who can think independently, someone who can think big. After spending good eight years at US, then I decided to come back to India and join IIT as a professor. So basically what I do is like I teach. I teach the bubbling undergraduate students and the postgraduate students because I love teaching. I like to play around with the chemicals, I like to play around with the lights, instruments, and I run also quite a big research group as you can see here, and they are the driving force behind this discovery which I am trying to talk to you about. And at the end, I am also an entrepreneur. TEDx says that don't sell anything, but I am here to sell the dreams. So here we are making some smart spin coater and some arsenic water-based filter, and we use it for the community purpose. And all of these things, small, small activities, brought me some awards, like which have been mentioned here. But coming back to the story which for here today we are, again this energy. Problem is quite big. So from the morning, 7 a.m. to the time you go up to sleep, can you imagine a single moment when you don't use the electricity? If today there is no electricity, you can't imagine any single event in your life. Forget about your mobile. You cannot even switch on your mobile. So electricity is one of our primary goals. And understanding that, even the WHO has declared that energy problem is one of the biggest problem of the human society. Now, by energy, we all depend on the conventional fossil fuels like petroleum, coal, and natural gas. But those resources are depleting. So those days are not very far that we are going to end. And the statistic says that within 2050, with the amount of globalizations and civilizations happening, we will be getting rid of all kinds of natural resources. So we have to find out an alternative. So what are the alternatives? There are several alternatives. There can be hydro energy, there can be wind energy, there can be nuclear energy, there can be solar energy. But solar energy is one of the most clean and green source of energy. First of all, like you know, at least for you who are sitting in the audience and for the rest of you of your generations ahead, the sun will be there, I guess. And then solar energy is a clean and green source of energy. It does not leave any carbon residues. So it's pretty safe to use these things. And because of that, so this energy has been used many places. Solar cells is nowadays used in the building to making the green building, as you can see that in the rural areas and the remote areas, solar panels have been installed and they use the sunlight to harness the energy, convert, convert the sunlight into the electrical energy and that energy is stored in a device called inverter which converts the DC energy to the AC energy which supply inside your house, power up your gadgets and what are the extra energy which through an utility meter is goes to the grid and then when you need it again, it comes back to your house and that's where the solar cells works. Now the solar cells which we are talking about here is a silicon solar cells. We have probably seen it in our calculator battery, in our mobile battery. 
But do you know that the silicon solar cells is also very costly? I will give an example. I am from the IIT Roorkee, and it took 20 crores to install solar panels on the hostels of the IIT Roorkee. So if I have to think about in a rural areas like Sundarbar or in rural areas of Bihar or Odisha, I can't imagine that. I have to think about something which is very very cost effective, which can bring the technology to the hand of the common people, and that's what it comes. So we are keep on thinking that. Good to say that the Rome was not built in a single day. So similarly. The photovoltaic technology evolutions was guided by the discovery of new materials. As new and new materials were discovered, this technology becomes more and more mature. Lying solar cells, silicon solar cells, we came very interesting technology called DSST technology or disensitized solar cells. A Swiss gentleman in 1990 called Michael Gretzel, he thought that why not the artificial photosynthesis can be mimicked in the lab? And we can make solar energy in the lab just by copying how does the plant make their food, and that's what the idea came. And what he made is called disensitized solar cells, or sometimes it is called gradual cells also. And these solar panels has been quite utilized in many of these places. If you look it very closely, this kind of solar cells is a sandwich type of structure. It has two electrodes. One is called positive electrode, another is called negative electrode, and in between them there are some semiconducting material called titanium dioxide. And you put some electrolyte, but the heart of this device is the dye, some kind of ruthenium dye, which absorbs the sunlight and which converts the energy into the solar energy. But again, this dye has some problem. This dye is volatile. This dye is corrosive, and at the same time, this dye is expensive. So, although there are several problems with this technology, but this problem, this technology has been used commercialized in many of the places, as you can see in Geneva Airport, DSC panel has been installed. Even in EPFL, like you know, the convention center, they have also installed these panels. But what constantly triggering to my mind, like you know, so everything is there, but why still, like you know, 80 to 90 percent of the import of our energy is still from China? Why can't we be energy independent country? So we have to do something where we can produce the, our electricity by own. So I used to take a long stroll in the IIT Roorkee beautiful campus. So one fine morning, I was walking down the campus. And when I saw that there are some jamun fruits were falling in the road, and some kids were playing with the jamun, and they were mashing the jamun, and the jamun was everywhere, and it was darkening the road. And what immediately clicked to my mind, what gives the dark color of the jamun? So we all know that you know jamun is good. Jamun is good for like you know, it has all this anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, whatever anti, and after that you add that jamun can do. That we all know that nowadays people all say these things that. But we said, you know, can it do it something like you know, not anti, but something making it, producing something? So what I thought that if since it is so dark, there must be something which is absorbing the sunlight in the visible solar spectrum. So what I asked my student, okay, let's take this zamun and smash it, do a chemical simple treatment, use it as a dye, and make a solar cells. And he told me that you know, okay, I mean, it cannot work because you know we just take it as a fruit, like you know, how can we try to make a solar cell out of a fruit? Like you know, it's not possible. But he said, let's just try it. Then I went and we tried, and boom, it worked. It gave an efficiency of 0.5%. You might say that you know silicon solar cell has an efficiency of 12%, but 0.5%. If you don't finish the story yet. So that's what the jamun story started. So it is no longer become a fruit in your dining table. Now it is a fruit which can also lighten up your house. How does this solar cell is made? This is very simple. You take the jamun fruit, you extract it chemically, and find out the pigment which is inside this jamun fruit, and make a device out of that. If you want it to look in a more close way, so this picture shows that. So we first take some conductive glass substrate called chlorine doped oxide glass substrate, and on top of that, we put some layer of titanium dioxide, which is a semiconducting oxide. And to make it things easy, it helps to transport the charge carriers, to transport the electrons and holes. And then what we did that we put this titanium dioxide coated glass substrate in this jamun extract solutions overnight. Next morning we take it out, we dry it, and we seal the devices with some another counter electrode, platinum counter electrode, or you can even use your pencil. Graphite pencil, and you can put on a glass substrate. You can make a counter electrode, and you can sandwich that. And all you need some electrolyte solutions. 
You make this device, the device is ready. And then you go and test it. So you make a solar cell working device which give an efficiency of 0.5 to 0.75 percent without doing any optimizations. Then we looked into the details. So we see that what else we can do with that. So we find out that inside the jamun, there is a pigment called anthocyanin, which the biologists say that it is good for their health. And we physicists say that now it is good for making optoelectronics devices. Then we did some more processing. We tried to separate out all the different structural isomers from these anthocyanins to get the right one and then make a solar panel out of it. And we get 2.5 volt in a small solar panels. That is quite amazing. As you can see, like this solar cells can be used in many of the rural places. These kids in the Sundarban area, they don't have the electricity for a long time. You can install that. We are even trying to do it in the Haiti. So this picture is quite representing, and it says that the poverty and the affluence in the same ground, and you can change it. So the working principle of the disensitized solar cells is again very simple, and I said that first, like the electron goes excited from the di molecule ground state to the excited state, then it goes to the titanium dioxide, then it comes back to this outside circuit, and there is an electrolyte which regenerates this process. This is the mechanism behind this process. Then we go more and more to optimize these things, go beyond the boundary, and finally we are able to make the so-called jamun solar cell, as the Enri call it. And then we hit the news everywhere. So we are, I think, in 2007 in almost all the news media, in almost all the electronic and print media. And even I, it was in Germany, US, Europe, in everywhere. It is considered the, one of the second uh, top most discovery by the Times group also. It is not only the jamun solar cells. Now we can use these jamun solar cells to drive some of our other ongoing research also. For example, I said about the water remediations. We even can use this solar panel for water remediation purpose. We can use it for doing some fundamental research. We can use it for microfluidics device, for charging the microfluidics devices, which will be able to solve the problem of the cancer sorting cell, the CDC, the circulating tumor cells problem. And then we are also using it for artificial intelligence or machine learning to help sensing platforms. So, and also, like, you know, for the algorithms development purpose. So there are different kind of applications apart from the indoor lighting this sound solar cell can have. So starting from a small fruit, now this device is not only lighting up the house, but it has finds and applications in almost all different areas of material science and biology. So that's what the story about the jamu. Now I like to continue these things. What is the moral of the story? I like to continue with this thing with the more uh, slides as the paper demands about this breaking the barrier. So once which was told almost by everyone that this is simply a food and you cannot make a solar cell, now everybody is jumping on it that you know you can do something better out of it and it can be the force of the energy for the next generation. So if the Jamun can, then all the fruits which have rich in anthocyanin, they can do the same job, but you have to be careful. So if you have to think big, if you if you can take risk, then you can be all successful. So I wanted to end up with the three more persons. So I hope all of you know this great guy. I'm a great admirer of this person. Who is this person? So all of you know that in his early life, he used to sell garments in the streets of the Mumbai. And people don't you know, look after him. With a very, very hard work and struggle, today Tata is a brand name. And many of you sitting in the audience want to join Tata. And he don't have that much formal education, also like you people. So what is not that man can destroy iron, but his own wrath can. So if you only think this, if you have the confidence in yourself, then only you can break the barrier. Look at this person. I'm sure all of you can identify him. Yes. Many times in the day, you go to his website. All of you have an account in his website. How many of you don't have the account in his website? Pretty good person, India is changing. Yeah. I think people are now trying to log out from the Facebook. So this Harvard graduate, and interestingly enough, I have met him in MIT during my research. I have also had an experience to talk to him personally. So this Harvard, Harvard dropout, he has another history. He told me that, you know, in his class year, his colleagues and his teachers used to say to him that, you know, you can't do anything. You can not write a simple, like, you know, code. And you know how things go in MIT. It goes in a very, very high speed. Like, you know, whatever you do today, 
tomorrow will become history. You should not look after you. Each and every day is a new day. You have to prove yourself each and every day. So this Harvard dropout, so he went out and met a small company and later on, you know, even all the big companies are using this platform to promote their company. So it is a name right now. So again, so someone who has confidence on himself, someone who has the courage to take the risk on himself, who can be successful. And my seventh person is the last person, this person. Who is this person? This one is his diet. He is one of the great and brilliant mind of the human generation ever lived. This guy has lost his ability to speak, lost his ability to interact with the external audience in his very early days. You know that, you know, when he was 24 years old, doctor announced him that he is going to die in another six months. He don't want to die. But what he did is a history. He has discovered the, one of the most famous theory of the astrophysics, Hawking radiation, black body radiation. In spite of the struggling disease, even today, the medical practitioner don't know how he can have done that, just by using the wheelchair. If any of you have seen one of his talks, he came also in India, in Bombay, he gave a talk in wheelchair. And he provided a talk to everyone, to all the students. And he used to give a talk by using some machine systems. So, this guy is one example which clearly shows that if you have a confidence on yourself, then nothing in the life can break you. Only thing is that you are the you are the person who can decide your destiny. When I went from India to US, like people from my place, there was not a single people go from India to US. And you remember ten years back I was from a village, I don't have an internet access. I have given the choice of the university in my GRE exam place. From there I went to the best place of the world. I spent my time with most of the Nobel laureates and when I wanted to return back, then people said, me, Are, come on, like, you know, eight years here in the US, like, you are getting jobs in so good company, I have so many hours from here, like, you know, why are you going back? This is against the trend. So I decided to come back and start my own research at IIT. And now, like, you know, you see that, you know, I mean, you are doing, you are doing again the hope for the common people. So I thing is that if you believe on yourself, then you can do it. So my thing is that, my belief is that, or my message to you is that, the purpose of one life is enlightened to other people. With that, I...